right folks, latest tool purchase here. Um, this is the Makita circular saw and it's the HS011G. Um, I've had my eye on this saw for a while. It's the 40 volt max XGT circular saw and it has a depth of cut of over 100 millimeters. So basically this saw will cut four by four fence posts um, in one pass. Um, so that's, that's, that's the main reason I bought it. I do have another reason I bought it, which I'll hopefully demonstrate in this video. Um, but this saw is also, I mean, you can use it freehand, but it's also compatible with the Makita track system. So I also have the, the Makita plunge saw, which I use the, the tracks for. I think you can see there, at the, hanging up at the back there. That's the Makita track. Uh, this saw will run along that track. So... This will be a valuable tool for, for me, for anyone that's doing sort of fencing or decking sort of work that works with 4x4 four four posts. Um, this saw should be a good addition to your, your armoury, uh, as it were. So I'll give you a quick overview of the saw now, just a quick one. I'm not, I'm not going to go into a detailed review of the saw and then I'll, I'll show you some of the uses that, that specifically I'm going to I'll use it for. And I'll, I'll do a couple of demos. Uh, so. That's it. We'll give you a quick overview now. So standard size comparison. Here's just a standard 18 volt uh, Dewalt circular saw that I use regularly. You can see the size difference there. Okay, so here's the saw in all its glory. There's that side the saw. As I say, this is not a review, but I'll just give you a quick overview. So I've got it with a 5 amp our battery 40 volt max, which is pretty big to be honest. Um, I may go for a you know a lower amp hour battery in the future just to make it a little bit lighter. Uh, the one thing that surprised me with this was the the weight. You know, obviously you look at it and you think it's going to be really heavy, but it is. It's fairly light. I use fairly loosely, but it is light for the size of the saw. And I think that's due to the magnesium you know base plate and the materials it's made of. But it has all the standard features of your, um, you know, your normal circular saw. You know, you've got your beveling, all that. I'm not going to go into that, but... So the saw also comes with this fence, uh, which is huge. <laughs> you can see it there. Um, again, I'll probably never use that. I won't, won't use that much. But it does come supplied with that. Uh, I bought this as a bare tool, so I had to buy the, the battery. Um... And if you do buy an XGT battery, and you are in the Makita line, just be aware that you will need uh, another charger. The standard 18 volt charger from Makita does not fit these batteries. So here's the XGT charger. This model is DC40RA. Uh, so I actually bought that specifically for this saw, because it's only 40 volt, the max tool I have. And there's your standard 18 volt charger. Right, so here's the two saws mounted to the track, as I was explaining earlier. So this is the circular saw, this is the standard plunge saw. The plunge saw I use all the time. Um, I'll put a quick clip in here. Just uh, what I normally use the plunge saw for, it's mainly ripping fence slats. Um, this one here, with the track, I think the ideal thing for that, and I'll, I'll try and get another clip in as well, is when you need to sort of bevel a four inch post, you know, when it's going up against a wall, you know, that you need to maybe angle the post to get it, you know, plumb against the wall. I'll demonstrate, it's easier to demonstrate, but I'll put a, the track along a four by four post and show you. So here's another view of the saws on the track. Here's a circular saw, obviously, and there's your, your standard plunge saw. So just to show you that it is compatible, maybe gives you an idea of the size difference. So that's it. I'll give you a quick overview now. As I've said, it's not a review, so it's just a quick overview of the saw. And now we'll get into the saw, you know, and what it, what it can do. Right, so firstly, I'll just demonstrate a straight cut. Um, this is an old 4x4 post. I'll do a straight cut, and I'll take it from a couple of different angles so you can see the saw in, in action. So here we go. Okay, so there's the cut quality. See, pretty good. Minimal tear out. Uh, perfect for square cutting 4x4 posts. So what I'll do now, I'll demonstrate cutting an angle on the post. You know, if you had to angle it up against a wall or something, or cut an angle out 
just to profile it or you know that, that's when I would use this that's when the track would come in handy so I'll demonstrate that now Okay, so first problem, um, I've never tried doing that before with this saw but it's obviously, once you've got the track on, it doesn't quite have a depth of cut uh, to, to cut that in one piece. It's just about there, so I think you could just use a handsaw. So you can see that it's just shy but that's still going to be a useful tool uh, for doing that. You, obviously you just need to run, al run along the top of that with a handsaw. So I'll just run along with a handsaw now, I'm just starting there. See how easy, see how easy that is. I mean, it's only it's millimeters, you know. So you can see, hopefully, that's all you need to cut through there. I mean, it's it's basically two or three millimeters. And the saw just ripped right along there, you know. And that's the result. So you can see the angle on the post. So that could be very useful, you know, when you're scribing against a wall or uneven wall, you know, for driveway gates or yeah, multiple uses. But see that there, whatever we laid the track, we've cut that right out the 4x4 post pretty much in one pass. So pretty useful. So there's the finish you get. There's the angle. And if it'll show, you see the post up there. Here's the angle where we laid the track. And that's the finish. Okay, so we've got a post here. So in the real world, if you wanted this trimmed, this saw I think would be ideal. Just ignore all this, but if we think this is just a vertical post that needs cut square at the top, um, this is where you would use that saw. This is where I would use that saw. So we'll give that a go now. Again, we'll go for a square cut across the top of this post in position. Okay, just lined it up. So here we go. See how quick and easy that was. So that would be ideal now just to put a post cap on. Um, you could even use the saw. We could even use the bevel cut. You know, just bevel it in one pass basically. So that's just to demonstrate that. So there's the finish on the post. That's what we've just cut. I managed to cut my fence at the same time, but <laughs> we'll repair that. So here we go. Right guys, I'm going to try and do a mock-up here of a hit and miss fence. Now I do a lot of hit and miss fences. Um, and one of the, probably the main reason that I bought the saw is because when you do a hit and miss fence and you have to run certain sections at an angle, you need to trim this section here like that in, or, in order to get the cap and rail on the top. Now this always causes me problems. I, you know, I do it with, you know, the track saw, it takes a lot of time. You know, planes, sanders, whatever I can get, you know, just to try and do it because it takes ages to get it right. And the reason we want to do that, we want these slats all profiled at that same angle so we can just fit the cap and rail on top. Now I think that saw will be ideal for that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to fit all these up to replicate a hit and miss fence and then we'll see how it copes. Alright guys, so I've replicated a hit and miss fence, which is basically alternate slats so you can't see through. See how they're fitted alternately. I do a lot of these style of fences. Um, so you can see what I've done there. This is how you would normally do it and then you would have to trim these in order to get the cap and rail on top to sit flush. Obviously you can see through there. So we need to cut these flush now. That's the whole reason I bought this saw because I think you could just you know make the first cut, lay the blade flat on the rail and then just run it along the rail and cut cut this board and that board at the same time now that depth of cut is roughly 70 to 80 millimetres to get that width so I'm hoping that saw just runs right down there and it saves a hell of a lot of time you know when you come up against this situation so we'll see how we get on um, it's easy enough to do if you've only got one side you know slats on one side you can just use your normal circular saw to do that or your track saw but with this, because of this thickness here, you know, it's just over 80 millimetres. That's where that saw will come into its own. So that's what I'm hoping for. If it doesn't work, the saw's going back. <laughs> so I've got two options. I can try and lay the blade on there, like I said, or I could use the track. I don't really want to use the track because 
you know, on the job, that would just take too long. So I'm hoping to do it freehand. I was going to stop there, that looks to be excellent. I think that's going to work a treat. Tell you something, that's just made my day. See by doing that at that angle? See how that cuts no problem? You just have to take your time, be very careful, and that's cutting that perfectly flush. So I'm going to do that, I'm going to continue all the way down there. Get it cut perfectly flush and then I'll show you with the capping rail on top. And just show you what a problem this has been over the years, you know. I'm not sure if you can hear me guys, I'm just laying the blade carefully, keeping it dead flush with the top of the rail. And I will just run this right down here in real time and see how it gone. I'm pretty happy with that guys. So from here you can see what we've just done there. So we've just cut all those at that angle. This rail is not the best, it's just a scrap rail that I used, it's a bit bent. So you can see I had a little bit of a issue there, it just started to dig in a little bit. So I just adjusted the saw while I was doing it. But you can see I'm really chuffed with that. See that all the way up there. We'll get the other side now. So now the whole reason for doing that, this is the capping rail um, and the majority of my fences I use these on the top. Just gives it a nice, uh, a neater finish so you can see the finish there now. So see the angle? By cutting those at an angle like that, now you get a capping rail on. That just gives a really nice transition. The whole reason I bought this saw was to do that. Uh, sorry to keep going on about it but that's, I'm just so chuffed with that result. That's going to save me a hell of a lot of work in the future. Um, and I used quite an extreme example here as well, where it's quite a quite an angle down. It's not usually as bad as that. It's normally, you know, well, not as steep as that in the majority of cases. So that's probably a worst case scenario. And that beauty of a saw just done the job perfectly. So I'm really, really chuffed with that, as you can probably tell. So shout out to John of Tweedvale Con Contracts as well. Uh, we actually discussed this on Facebook and I did say I was going to do a video to show you John. So hopefully you can see the results of that, which is what we were both looking for. So perfect. Right guys, well hopefully you found the video uh, interesting enough. Um, it's basically just to make you aware that this, this thing is on the market. Um, as I said earlier, um, I, I have been waiting for a long time for a saw with this cut capacity. Uh, so, if you enjoyed the video guys, uh, please please give it a thumbs up because it helps promote the video. Uh, please subscribe if you like these this type of content. And thanks again, all the best guys. Cheers. Thank you.